We're going to move on now to uh, the uh, second uh, one you've chosen, that's Gloria from Van Morrison, so you were quite influenced by a band, The Man. Well, he just sounded like Mick, didn't he? Definitely. He, he sounds so like Mick, especially on this record. But I also remember him, he mucked up doing Here Comes the Night on a live NME, NME poll. God, I and, that. and I remember him going to the wrong part of the song, and I just thought, well, at least they were live. <laughs> no, because uh, oddly enough, I was going on about uh, Emil Ford messing up on the NME show at Wembley. Ah. Um, and you have brought this up only a few weeks later. Yeah. Uh, NME again, because they did tell It was a massive that. concert, wasn't oh, it? And yeah. it was live, and it was, a, it was a quite about 20,000 people in the Wembley pool there. And I remember seeing the Stones in there a couple of times, and I used to sort of feel nervous from them that they were going to make a mistake. They never made a mistake. No. The sound wasn't always great, but that wasn't their fault. But I do remember... No, nobody could hear them anyway. No. <laughs> you know, because the screaming was so strong. Yeah. But um, I don't scream like that anymore. But, uh, you know, you go along, it's just so exciting. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, Van Morrison. Hello, everyone. We're, we're still here. We're, we're just discussing... No, we were just discussing Midam there because Midam, uh, of course, is in Cannes every year. The, uh, uh, it, it is the record business, um, a bi a place of business. Yeah, it's like the equivalent of the Cannes Film Festival, but for music. Exactly, and, and yes, I, I, the answer is yes. I was in Cannes, but I, I don't remember seeing you in Cannes or Brian. I think it was David Addis you saw there because it was immediately after that that Brian came into. Uh, well, it was Radio 210 as it is now, mm. uh, and well, you know, he got in touch and stuff. Mm. But but I don't, I don't actually. Al although it was just one big party over there because there were so many parties going, I concentrate more on the parties where the best ones were going on. Well, in Cannes, you mean? Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, we all did. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw a fight in the casino there with between Lindsay the Paul and um, Don Arden's daughter, who we all know from being on the television. Yeah. Osborne's wife. Well, I don't really know Sharon, but I know her brother Dave better. Yeah. He, 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 but they, Sharon and Lindsay the Paul had a fight in the casino. I didn't know that. I did see Lindsay over there because she came on a party on a yacht. Oh, I can pay. But you all. <laughs> no, it's true. It's all yachts down at Cannes, isn't it? Of course it is. And uh, what, what was great, she knew a friend of mine, Stan Cohen. Hi, Stan. Stan Cohen, a terrific guy. And uh, Lindsay just lived up the road. And he said to her, do me a favour, if you see Mike down at Cannes, just go up to him and kiss him. And she was really big then. Yeah. You, you remember she had all those hits? Oh, yeah. And, of course, when she walked on the yacht, I was there with a friend of mine, Roger Pilkinson. He's part of the glass set up. Good, I know. I'm doing... But, uh, <laughs> no, Roger, great guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were hanging out together in Cannes. And we, oh, it's all coming back to me. We were involved with Lionel Morton's record, Don't Let Life Get You Down. We were pushing that. So, you know, you needed to be on that scene mm. to make it happen. Anyway, we're, we're all having drinks, you know, like you do. Everybody's, like, standing about looking cool, uh, like you should be there. And it was funny how we got on that party, because it was an old friend from school who I bumped into, and he went, uh, tonight the top party is bump, and he handed me. He said, how many of you? I said, just the two of us. He went, be there. He said, anyone's anyone, be there. You know, you know it was one of those. <laughs> So we, anyway, we were there, and then she comes on this yacht, and of course everybody's looking at her, she was looking absolutely fantastic. And she walked over and gave me this big kiss, which really blew my mind, because I didn't really know her. I had interviewed her for a magazine I was working on, but it was all quite brief, and I thought, wow, she must have really remembered me, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, and, you, and you, for that split second, suddenly hey, thought, no, she, I'm she, not so bad, you know? <laughs> she, no, she whispered in my Stanley. Cohen told me to do this the moment I saw uh, you. She put went, your balloon. I said, God bless him. <laughs> no, because he looked great. Yeah, so and I've always remembered that. And in fact, I have seen her recently. Uh, she turned up at the do at the Palladium. And, and, and I thanked her even then because I remembered all these years. Mm. And she, she was really, she looks really nice even now. Yeah, yeah. Good. It's a tiny little thing, isn't she? She's tiny. Um, I'm not trying to trump your, you know, no, mate with no. Lindsay, but no. I, uh, I worked in a studio in the States in Massachusetts in the mid-70s, and uh, I did an album with a band called Carmen, and a couple of years later I got to know all these people so well on the ranch that this studio was on, I went back for a little social visit for a couple of weeks, and Lindsay DePaul was over there recording an album when she was going out with um, the, the actor. James Coburn. James Coburn, yeah. Yeah. So when she realised I was English, you know, 
she, she's, we, we got talking about where we lived in London and all that sort of stuff and there I am having breakfast with James Coburn and Lindsay DePaul I think life's really weird isn't it no that's beat me <laughs> it has beat you no one up there she didn't Stevie. kiss me but I know, know she kissed me right on the lips it was nice <laughs> yeah but I had breakfast with her and James yeah I mean well, I've met one of the magnificent men yeah, I've never met him, so <laughs> fair, 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 fair dues. Yeah, he's dead now. I'm just trying, just trying to think of two of them together, because she's so it, small. And he's very tall. Yeah. It, it did look a bit weird, I've got to be honest. I mean, the two of them were on this, sounds old-fashioned, but on this porch swing one night, and they looked great sitting down. <laughs> but when they stood up, I wasn't sure. Yeah. And were, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to picture it now, the fun and games. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> and I'm losing my headphones. Isn't wrestling it? in the bedroom. I can, I, 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 I can picture it all now. Let, let's talk about yeah. Broken English. Now, this is a band that uh, happened. I, I, let's get this right. Was this was eighties, wasn't it? Yeah, eighty six. We started, and this, the, we we released our first CD in eighty seven. Yeah. Now, I first heard this on radio. It was, I'll, I'll tell you straight. I was driving down. Uh, it wasn't the M4, the one parallel to it. The M3? Not the M40. The, is it the M4, one that's parallel that yeah. used to be the real road before they took the M4? To, the, the M4. <laughs> everyone, everyone met, goes oh, down the M4. Oh, you mean you went, you're now. going down the A4? The A4. Right. I, I'm terrible on the roads. But um, anyway, that one, and I was bombing along. I remember I just got back from town, got off the train, got in the car, and this came on the radio. And I really thought it was the Rolling Stones. Another lie, see? And she's coming on strong. That that is in fact uh, broken English. Now, what what I, I'm I'm calling you Steve because that's your real name, Steve Elson, uh, better known to fans these days as Nick Dagger or Mick Jagger. In I wouldn't call you a Mick Jagger impersonator anymore. You 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 just have become Nick Dagger to fans. Yeah, I mean, Mick Jagger was the uh, sort of template to build on. Yeah, you know, it's like getting an Austin Ford and and just doing it up a bit. I, I saw some of the fan, uh, fans going quite wild that night at the show. Understandable. Six like, on legs, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, th th does it vary throughout the country? I mean, are there certain parts of the country we, no, where... No, I mean, without boasting, I mean, it always gets that kind of reaction. How long it takes to get to the real sort of where they're all out their seats depends on sometimes temperament, sometimes, you know, if it's earlier in the week, if it's a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and um, the theatre aren't keen on people dancing, then it can feel like it's a bit more reserved. But they always do end up getting up, even if they're not allowed to in a particular theatre for whatever reasons. They'll always get up in the end. Yeah, because there was one young lady who was almost determined to get on that stage. Yeah. And a couple of ladies' securities uh, came over and helped her away. But we were all laughing because it was terrific, great fun. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a fun show I, 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 I want to put across to people. You're not up there trying to be, you know, the man himself. You, you are having fun with well, it. Well, we, we describe it as we're a cartoon of the Stones. So, you know, anything... That, the, the Stones have always been something to chuckle at. I remember even when I was a rebellious teenager and they came on TV, I didn't sort of become very stern-faced and think, yeah, the, these are the start of the rebellion. I laughed because I thought they looked funny and they did look like cartoon characters to me, so... I think you've got to maintain that sort of humour through the show. 